What's up guys, it's Brandon Flash. You're joining me outside of Goal, Norway, and we're at a site with not one, not two, not three, but four different charging operators at the same site. And I wanna just give you guys a full tour here and show you what's going on. We even have this weird thing that you pump liquid fuel into your a tank instead of pumping electrons into a battery. That's a strange thing here. So let's do a full tour. So we'll start off over here. We have a Burger King. This is a Uno X gas pump situation with Burger King as kind of the main thing. And then we have some Mare chargers here. So these are 150 kilowatt Delta Electronics chargers. They have a screen on each side. They have both CCS2 and Chatamo on both sides, as you can see here. These are made by Delta Electronics, as you can see there as well. And these output a max of 400 amps for CCS2. And there are two of them. So this is a pretty basic, I'd say Gen 1-ish type installation of charging. Here we have a weird canopy with some liquid fuel pumps. There's diesel and there's gasoline. I don't know who uses that stuff here still. But... Then we're heading over to these. I have never seen this style charger in person before. So these are, I believe, EV Box Supernova, if I remember correctly. So here you can see their distribution cabinet. I don't see any label of how much current, unfortunately. Maybe someone can backwards calculate the uh, arc flash risk sticker here, but it is at 400 volt. So these are massive. Wow. Much bigger than I thought they would be. Uh, let's find some labels. So these are Ragda Charge. They've got some heavy dust on them, that's for sure. And here's the label. So these are a max of 500 amp or 240 kilowatt output. These are the EV Box Tronic Modular. Apparently these are all in one, so not the Supernova, my mistake. And instead of using bollards, they actually have these like massive, I don't know, granite or some sort of stone to help prevent people from hitting them. Looks like they were there, but then they got moved up there. So let's see if we can figure this out. So they have it in a couple languages maybe or no we have app credit card and then we have uh rfid instructions so let's see if we can switch languages here that's a long list of languages english select a connector so use payment terminal tap charge cards or that let's see the chose cost so 4.99 a kilowatt hour and then here we have a pater and we also have the uh, DC meters here. So 19 megawatt hours, 13 megawatt hours. And then we have a couple other ones. So these ones have funny names. So we have, let's see, Marius, Frederic, Camilla, and Marianne. So 11 megawatt hours, 17 megawatt hours. And then over here we have Marielle and Amelia, Emily. 17 megawatt hours and 11 megawatt hours. So it definitely seems that people are preferring the right hand side handle on these units. Let's look at these charge handles as well. That's pretty firm. I don't see any labels on these, but these are Phoenix contact. They appear to be dry cables. They're pretty light, but those are pretty uh, firm. See the lightning bolt symbol there. And then over here we have Let's see how many stalls. I cannot count them from over here. But we've got version two superchargers for basically as far as the eye can see. Well, not that far, but you get my point. We have four that are pull through over here. And these all have the dual cable set up. As I've shown before, they have the type two DC for early Model S and Model X. And then they have CCS2. 
And these are all open to all EVs, as you can tell by the ID4 over there charging. Oh, and I just realized we actually have some version 4s here, or not version 4, version 3s here as well. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, we have 8 version 3 posts here as well, which I didn't even realize initially. So, here's a version 3 post, just like that. So, these are the liquid-cooled cables, and these only have CCS2. So, two version 3 cabinets. You can see where they uh, mounted the gateway there. So they have these kind of modular bases. You can also see the uh, red conduit that they're able to use here that makes it a lot easier. And then these are just kind of plugs because this is where the uh, antenna used to be on these, but they've replaced all of the antennas because these used to be 2G if I remember correctly. And they had to replace all the modems and they did that by adding just a charging gateway instead. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have 16 posts. It looks like we have another charging gateway over here. So that must be because they can only handle so many per charging gateway, I guess. I'm not entirely sure. Here we have the supercharger label. So these are, let's see, 72 kilowatt times two. So 144 kilowatt roughly but Tesla probably runs them at 150 kilowatt. Here we have two transformers. Good amount of Y charging. I really like these pull-through stalls, though. I think they should have put in some version 3s there as well. And then coming up over here, we have Neo Power. We at least have a battery swap station. We'll see if they also have charging on the side. I think that's a smart number four. Smart number three, actually. It's pretty cool. I wish I could see inside of this battery swap station, but unfortunately I cannot. This one is saying three minutes for the battery swap. You can see all the markings here. So you pull up. I think you continue past or you pull here. And then the car does itself because it's a fully automated process. And you've got cameras and everything as well. And it appears that there is not charging here. So some of these battery swap stations also have charging, but I'll count this as a type of charging, if you will, because this is effectively taking a dead vehicle and charging it up by just replacing the battery rather than having uh, a charge up in the normal sense. Let's see if I can find any labels on here. And no real labels as far as I can tell, but my understanding is that these ship pretty much fully built and then are kind of just assembled on site. Looks like they've got a like another door in the back, I guess. Not sure what that's entirely for. Maybe just for being able to swap things or just for service. We've got the electrical hookups back here. You, of course, have a bunch of cabinets, so that's where they can have the batteries put in and out. But, yeah, I just wanted to show you guys this site because I thought it was super cool to have this many operators at one site. Anyway, just another quick uh, tour of a site here in Norway. It's just crazy how far ahead Norway is on every bit of infrastructure compared to North America. I think hopefully we eventually get to this point in North America where we have a bunch of different operators on the same site, but it seems like mm, it seems like there's a lot of commercial entities that are really pushing for exclusivity rather than for the benefit of EV drivers, which I mean, you can't really fault them for it, but it I think overall, long term, everyone will be better off if there are multiple options because there will always be different people that have different agreements with different charging networks or preferences for whatever reason. Like you could have a car that comes with free charging on one of the networks, but not on the others. So they'll use that. Or you could have someone that has a company car that has a commercial agreement with one of the networks, but not with one of the others or whatever. You could have an issue that plagues some charging hardware, but not others. 
Anyway, multiple examples. We'd love to hear what you guys think. If you haven't already, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you guys on the next one.